Hello friends, welcome to Zeta Axis and today we will discuss Coriolis force. Coriolis force is a very important force to understand different phenomena occurring in our weather like the jet stream formation, the tropical cyclone, the extra tropical cyclones. In fact, it is also helps in understanding how the wave currents move in our oceans. So we will generate a very basic understanding of Coriolis force because the actual understanding of Coriolis force is very mathematical and we will not be going into those mathematics but we will be using simple understanding to see how this force works. So the Coriolis force is basically created due to two things. The rotation of earth, we know that our earth rotates on its own axis and second is inertia. So we know that whenever an object is moving, it will not come to stop suddenly, but it will require some time because of inertia. So these two phenomena result to Coriolis force. So we already know that our earth rotates on its axis, which we can see here. And surrounding this our earth, we have our atmosphere, which is fluid in its structure. So like our earth, our atmosphere is not solid. And because of its fluid characteristics, the movement is not completely synced with the movement of earth, but it is also affected by other factors. Now, if we see the basic effect of Coriolis force, then we can see that if we are moving from equator towards the North Pole, then the Coriolis force will move the wind in the right direction. That is the rightward movement it will give. So if we are looking in the direction of movement, our movement will be deflected towards the right. Similarly, in the northern hemisphere, if you are coming from North Pole towards the equator, then you will see that the movement occurs in the right direction again, in the, from the direction of movement. So if you see that this wind or this air is moving, from the pole towards the equator. So it is deflected in the right hand side of its movement. Similarly, if we discuss about Southern Hemisphere, so if we are moving from equator to, uh, to South Pole, then the wind or the water will be deflected in the left side. That is, if you see in this direction, so this is the leftward deflection. And similarly, if a wind is moving or a fluid is moving from Southern Pole towards the equator, then it will again be deflected in the leftward side of its movement. So this is the basic effect that Coriolis force will deflect any fluid in the right hand direction in the northern hemisphere and it will deflect the fluid in leftward direction in the southern hemisphere. This fluid could be air as well as water. Now to understand Coriolis force, let's take these four bands across our earth where the yellow colored band is at the equator and these all bands are in higher latitudes compared to this equator. Now if we unfold these rings then we will see that the length of the ring at the equator is highest while as we are moving upwards the length of these rings decreases. Now because our earth is rotating so any fluid that is the air at that location or the water at that location, it must also move at certain speed. Now because at the equator the length is higher, so the, the fluid at the equator will move at a higher speed. And as we go in higher latitudes, the speed which, which they are moving will decrease because the circumference is less as the latitude increases. So we can see here that at the equator, the particles will be moving at highest speed that is 1700 kilometers approximately and as we are moving northwards the speed is decreasing. Now to understand the Coriolis force let's take one particle in each of these bands. Now we have already seen that the particle which is in the yellow band which is at equator it will be moving at the highest speed because the length of this band is highest. Similarly, as we go higher in the latitudes, the speed of particles will reduce because the circumference of these rings decreases. That is, the distance that is to be traveled by these particles decreases. Now consider that this particle, this air particle at the equator, which is moving at the speed of 1700 km per hour, is suddenly decided to move northwards. 
when this particle is in this band or when it comes to this band its speed will be higher than the speed of the particles in this band so it will move ahead now because of the inertia this particle will try to hold on to its speed and as long as its speed is higher than the speed of particles in this band in green band it will continue to move a little further ahead till its speed reduces to 1650 km that is the speed of particles in this band when the speed is reduced then it will move in sync with the particles in this band but until its speed is higher it will keep on gaining a little distance in the rightward direction similarly when this particle further moves in the north and comes to this pink band we will see that it is again moving ahead because its speed is higher than the speed of the particles in this pink band and again when it will go to the blue band due to inertia it will try to hold on to its speed and because of higher speed it will move a little further ahead so if we see in total this wind particle which was trying to move northwards is getting deflected in the rightward direction because of inertia now if we consider a similar scenario when a particle is trying to move from the blue band towards the yellow band so what happens its speed is slower so when it moves to this band it is actually moved backwards because its speed is lesser than the speed of particles in this band similarly when this will move from this band to green band again it will be moved a little backwards because its speed is lesser than the speeds of particles in this band slowly it will be able to catch up to the speed and once it attains that speed then it will move in sync but as long as its speed is less than the uh, speed of particles in this band it will move little further back and similarly when it comes from here to the yellow band it will again move back so we can see that the air particle which was trying to move from this place to this place it actually got deflected in the backward direction or if you see from the direction of movement it is again deflected in the rightward side similar mechanism occurs in the southern hemisphere where we can see that the deflection would occur in the leftward direction now I hope you were able to understand the very simple or generic understanding of how Coriolis force works. Now we will discuss the characteristics of Coriolis force that is what are the major characteristics of Coriolis force that you should keep in mind while you are trying to understand different weather phenomena where Coriolis force is involved. So the first is that the Coriolis force increases as the distance increases from equator. So if we are at the equator the Coriolis force will be minimum or in fact it will be zero but as we move away from the equator the Coriolis force will increase so we can see here that at the equator the Coriolis force was very less but as it moved away the Coriolis force was very high or it became very high similarly when the air particle moved from the north pole towards the equator so the Coriolis force was very high at the north pole but as it moves towards the equator we can see that the Coriolis force has reduced to a very small amount similar thing happens in southern hemisphere as well this is the profile of Coriolis force we can plot we can see that at the equator the Coriolis force is zero and as we move higher in latitudes we can see that the Coriolis force increases in both hemispheres Secondly, Coriolis force increases as velocity of air or water increases. So here we can see two wind particles having different velocities 50 km per hour and 80 km per hour and there is a very small amount of Coriolis force because these wind particles are closer at the equator. Now as these particles move further away from the equator we see that the Coriolis force increases on both of them but because this air particle was having a higher speed 80 km per hour it got more deflected you can see that it has turned much more compared to this air particle which was having very less speed or which has, was having less speed that is 50 km per hour therefore the Coriolis force is directly proportional to the velocity of the fluid if the air or water is moving faster it will be deflected more 
if it is moving slower it will be deflected less the third characteristic of coriolis force is that it acts in direction perpendicular to motion so if we consider this is the movement of our air particle or our fluid then the coriolis force will always be in the direction perpendicular to it so if this is the movement of our fluid it will be in this direction and if this is the movement of our fluid then the coriolis force will be in this direction so basically coriolis force is always perpendicular to the direction of movement of that fluid now we know that any force which acts in perpendicular direction it does not change the magnitude of that movement or magnitude of that force but it only changes the direction therefore coriolis force does not change the magnitude or velocity of any fluid it only changes the direction now here are some of the major weather phenomena in which coriolis force is involved each of these phenomena are not possible if there is no coriolis force now let's see what role coriolis force in different weather phenomena the first one is tropical cyclones so we can see here that in a tropical cyclone it is the coriolis force which balances the pressure gradient and it generates a circulating motion so here you can see that because of coriolis force the wind is circulating around the low pressure area and this is how tropical cyclone is produced so coriolis force plays a major role in generating tropical cyclones similarly in the extra tropical cyclones the cold air which tries to move towards the low pressure area gets deflected and it comes to the boundary of cold air and warm air forming a cold front so even in extra tropical cyclones we see that the wind direction is deflected with the help of coriolis force here you can see that coriolis force plays a major role in forming the jet streams we can see that the wind system is started from equator it was moving in the north because of pressure gradient but as it as it continued to move towards north coriolis force increased and it deflected this wind system in the right direction and we can see that all the wind system which were produced and were moving in the north were deflected and we see formation of high speed moving wind belt over here which is jet stream therefore coriolis force is also responsible for creating jet streams now here in this video we can see that how coriolis force changes the direction of motion of different systems in north hemisphere and south hemisphere so in the north hemisphere we can see that the anti cyclones where the air is moving outside from the high pressure zone so we can see that it is moving in clockwise direction while the cyclones where the air is moving towards the low pressure area it is moving in anti clockwise direction similarly in the southern hemisphere we can see that the anti cyclones where the air is moving outside of high pressure area it is moving in anti clockwise direction while here the cyclones are moving in clockwise direction so we can see that because the coriolis force acts in different directions in different hemispheres we can see the cyclones and anti cyclones also vary the direction in different hemisphere due to the coriolis force here we can see a cyclone i think a extra tropical cyclone in southern hemisphere and the green lines indicate the pressure gradient and the blue line indicates the coriolis force this is the path of air which we can see it is in a circular motion and this pressure gradient is pointing towards the central area while the coriolis force is trying to deflect the wind in the left hand direction because it is in south hemisphere now remember we can see here that the coriolis force is small here but it increases over here because the wind speed will increase as it comes over here moreover the coriolis force acts in direction perpendicular to the path of motion so here you can see that this coriolis force is not directly opposite to the pressure gradient but it is perpendicular to the path of motion of the wind at this point similarly in north hemisphere we can see that the wind moves in this direction the pressure gradient is pointing towards the low pressure area in the center and the coriolis force is trying to deflect the wind in the rightward direction if you see in the direction of path of the wind we will see that 
this side is the right hand side therefore it is deflecting the wind in the rightward direction now in this video we can see that this is the equator north of the equator we will see that cyclones are generated over here they are moving in anti-clockwise direction while cyclones are generated over here they are moving in clockwise direction if you will carefully observe we will see some cyclones over here and over here and you can check their directions and you will know that how Coriolis affects different cyclones based on their hemispheres so just by a margin of few hundred kilometers we can see that the rotation direction of the wind changes in cyclones thanks for watching the video and please like subscribe and share please share this video with your friends we are going to cover almost all topics related to upsc in geography as well as other topics